again and welcome to the Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things Bolt Action. In today's episode, we are going to be doing another unit review, this time taking a look at the most infamous German tank of the war, the Tiger One. This metal beast was the terror of Allied tank crews throughout the war, and if used properly, it can be the terror of the tabletop as well. Now, before we dive into today's video, in case you've not seen one of these things before, this is what I like to do. I start off with a unit overview, going through the stats and weapons of the vehicle or unit in question. And then we move on to the deep dive, taking a look at the good, the bad, the ugly, the pros and cons. And last but not least, we wrap it up with a score out of 10 and some final thoughts. And with that said, without further ado, let's act on Panzer and dive right into today's episode. Beginning with the unit overview, the Tiger is a heavy tank. Its principal service was from 1942 to 1945, making it a mid to late war unit if you're playing in time period specific games. Basically, don't be trying to use Tiger Wands to invade Poland or as part of the fall of France. It was a relatively common vehicle with over 1,300 of them being produced, meaning that you can use one in your list without worrying about it counting as being a little ahistorical or experimental. The Tiger can be purchased as a regular or veteran unit. To be clear, there is no inexperienced option. This represents the Tiger only being given to the most experienced and best tank crews in the German army. When taken as a regular, it will cost you 395 points. And as a veteran tank, it will cost a whopping 474 points. That's almost half of all the points available in a standard 1000 point game of bolt action. But for such a hefty investment, you do get one hell of a vehicle. Starting off, it is a heavy tank. This is the heaviest tank we've looked at to date in this bolt action series and it has a damage value of 10 plus which means light anti-tank guns at long range cannot physically penetrate its armor and medium anti-tank guns at long range will need a six to glance this means that you will need proper heavy or super heavy anti-tank guns if you're realistically going to threaten a tiger one as standard, it comes equipped with one turret-mounted super heavy anti-tank gun. This means it has a penetration value of plus 7 and it has an HE value of 3 inches. This makes it fantastic at not only dealing with enemy armor, being able to fight even the toughest Soviet or Allied tanks with ease, but it also means that even if your opponent does not bring many vehicles, you can easily pick up whole squads of infantry if your opponent is not careful with spreading his guys out. Supplementing this fearsome firepower is a coaxial MMG and a forward facing hull mounted MMG and the Tiger has the option to take a third Pintle mounted medium machine gun which means that in total it can have three of them giving it a potential 18 medium machine gun shots. And of course, it has the Tiger Fear ability, the special rule which was literally named after this vehicle. However, Tiger Fear requires you to be within 18 inches of an opponent. This can lead some German players to get overly aggressive with their Tiger. Remember, this vehicle is very tough and it's very fighty, but it's not invincible. If you're overly aggressive with it, you may find your very valuable, very expensive asset being knocked out in short order. Overall, it's quite simple. The Tiger is the quintessential heavy tank of the war and on the tabletop. Other factions that can bring heavy armor struggle to often pair that with good firepower meaning that the Tiger is unique and a premium unit. Now, all of that sounds really good, but let's move on from the unit overview into the deep dive. Let's get into the nitty gritty detail and see how the Tiger performs in game. 
The first thing to say about this unit is it's genuinely intimidating. It's one of the larger bolt action tanks that you can build. And when you slap one of these things down, it genuinely dwarfs the units around it and opposing it. When you bring a Tiger, not only are you making a statement, you're also fundamentally changing how your game of bolt action is going to be played. Rather than it being a cat and mouse tank duel between a couple of opposing vehicles, rather now you have a distinct clear advantage. More often than not, your opponent will not have brought enough anti-tank to deal with a Tiger. Most people do not anticipate facing heavy armor in game. They plan for medium armor. As a result, most people think that medium anti-tank guns are good enough for the job and they are woefully inadequate against a heavy tank. There is a huge step up from damage value 9 to damage value 10 in bolt action. And it's not just AT guns that struggle against the Tiger. You've also got infantry teams such as AT rifles, which the Soviets love to spam, but frankly are never going to get anywhere near this thing. And you've then also got Piat teams and bazookas. In all of these examples, whether it's an AT gun, a Piat or whatever, there is one simple factor that is going to give your Tiger a huge advantage, which is that the super heavy gun, not only is it unbelievably powerful, it's also ridiculously long ranged as well. Because of the 84 inch range on the super heavy, whilst the enemy is struggling to get into actual range, their long range against you, you will be able to fire at them. And when they do get into their long range, it's relatively simple for you to get into your half range, meaning that no matter what happens, you always have the to hit advantage. In all of my games with the Tiger One, and I have used this vehicle extensively, both competitively and also just for fun at home, the biggest thing, the biggest advantage has been that range. The number of allied tanks I have knocked out before they've even got into range. I, I can't tell you. I've lost count. I went to a tournament where my Tiger killed an allied tank every single game and it never even got a hit. Because my Tiger was hitting the enemy on threes, maybe fours. Sometimes there's a bit of long range, sometimes there's a bit of soft cover. Whilst the enemy was shooting at me. And they were hitting on sixes because typically they would have had to have moved, which is minus one. They'd be at long range, which is another minus one. And my tiger would be behind a bit of soft cover, giving it another minus one. That is a massive difference. When I'm hitting you on a four and you're hitting me on a six, it means that over a couple of turns, I'm going to land that hit. And when I land that hit with the super heavy, more often than not, that's it. That's the tank dual one in my favor. Meanwhile, over a six turn game, it might take you the whole game to land a single hit against me. And even when you do, more often than not, you're just gonna bounce off that sweet, sweet armor 10. However, it can be easy to get tunnel vision and focus in on the big gun and the armor and overlook the machine guns. And this would be a mistake because the amount of machine gun fire that the Tiger can bring to the battle is significant. That main gun is all well and good, but sometimes you just can't afford to take that risky one shot pop. Sometimes you need to just throw weight of dice at an enemy inexperienced horde. If you're playing competitively, you're likely to come across bamboo spear fighter spam, a very potent competitive tactic. And sometimes if you're playing competitively, but often when you're playing for fun against a Soviet player, he's going to be bringing that red tide masses of conscripts. And he's going to be doing his best to recreate enemy of the gates. In both of those scenarios, the volume of fire is more important because you're just looking to scythe down as many people as possible. And you need as many hits as possible because once you've got the hits, the three plus the wound is pretty easy. However, having said all this, the Tiger is not a perfect machine and it does have some pretty serious drawbacks. Firstly, it is extremely expensive. If you take it with that pintle, even if it's just regular, you're looking at over 400 points. That is over 40% of your list dedicated into one unit. That's a hell of a lot of eggs in one basket. 
Those points have got to come from somewhere and it's going to mean that you need to make hard choices and sacrifices elsewhere in your list. You cannot bring a tiger and expect to have all the other goodies as well. When it comes to the wider list, if you've taken a tiger, you have basically one of two options. You need to decide if you're going to take less units and you're going to keep your quality. You're going to stick with regular and veteran troops. Or are you going to try and keep the same amount of units that you would have taken in a different German list, one with a lighter tank, but instead reduce the overall quality, starting to include things like inexperienced or green troops in your force? Both approaches are equally valid. It's going to come down to player preference which route you want to go down. Perhaps you'll go for an elite panzer division where everything is veteran or regular, very small but very hard hitting and almost impossible to stop if it can keep the momentum. Or maybe your Tiger One will be the linchpin around a larger, more experienced army. Maybe you've got a bunch of Volks Grenadiers in there trying to hold the line. Whichever option you decide, it's important to note that by bringing a Tiger, not only are you going to be impacting how your opponent plays, but actually how he's going to deal with this thing, it's also going to impact how you play bot action. Bringing a heavy tank completely changes the dynamic of the game for both sides. Another big problem with the Tiger is it can still be pinned and it can be pinned out if your opponent gets enough markers on it. They may not have to actually destroy the thing in order for it to be knocked out. This makes the Tiger particularly susceptible to high explosives. And if you are not taking it as a veteran, even if the enemy hits you with something that can't hurt you, there is still a chance that you'll keep those pin markers. And even one or two pins can be devastating for a tiger, really reducing its effectiveness. And that's before we even get to flamethrowers, which frankly are the bane of any heavy vehicle. Flamethrowers don't have to actually hurt you to force you to take a panic test. And essentially, if they hit you with one, they're going to stack on a lot of pins very quickly. And more often than not, your tiger crew are going to flee. It's a sad day, but I've seen it more than once. I've seen it happen to veteran King Tigers, where a sneaky American flamethrower has jumped out of a building, hose it down with the old Flammenwerfer, and caused the tank crew to bail out. A simple 60, 80 point unit, knocking out one that costs over 500 points. Overall, the point I'm trying to make is, the Tiger is tough, but it ain't invincible. And if used improperly, well, your opponent has enough different levers they can pull to knock it out without ever having to penetrate its tough iron hide. And with that said, this brings us on to the final thoughts and the score out of 10. I'm going to give the Tiger a solid 7 out of 10. Bringing one to the battlefield is a high risk, high reward strategy. It is a lot of points, but if the enemy is not ready for heavy tanks, it can win you the game. But I only recommend the Tiger for veteran players. Get yourself a few games under your belt before you start using something like this. It's a premium unit, but it's also a finesse one. But all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. If you want to support the channel and help create more Bolt Action content, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By becoming a supporter, you will gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with over 1,500 active members, including a pretty strong and dedicated Bolt Action community. And before we go, I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of the latest members. So thank you to Somewhat Amusing, Armageddon Slayer, Oradina, Thumbtack22, Mark Barlow, Russell Serenka, Dallas Sosby, and Help Me Please. Thank you guys for doing your part. I also want to shout out the latest Patreons as well. So a big thank you to Evan Osborne Lomax, Elijah J, Simon D, Cyberez, and Iron Nerd. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. 
These are the War Masters, the people who have genuinely gone above and beyond the Call of Duty. So a massive thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, Mark Panconi, Ross Miller, Sawfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Diesel Fox, August Varney, and Absolute Rubbish. Thank you guys. I genuinely couldn't do this without you. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.